Welcome back. My name is uh, Simon Paganini and we continue on the presentation of the simplified dynamic positioning block diagram. In this lecture I focus on the controller like gain, dumping, drag and joystick and how the estimator works. Because we will have all ingredients to show how the vessel model is working. As discussed in the previous movies of this series, the vessel heading and position are measured using a, a gyro compass and position reference system. These are used to compare this data with an estimated vessel position and heading. The difference are then put through a Kalman filter where the Kalman gain will determine how much it trusts the measurements and how much it trusts the estimated data. Since the unmeasured uh, force are compensated with a huge delay in the error force computation and the current filter does not take care of the position set point from the operator, the automatic access control will take care of this task. The difference between the estimated and vessel set points are multiplied by a gain factor that are calculated and adjusted from the DPO to optimize the station keeping capabilities. Okay, let's make an example. Let's say the new estimate is 88.5 meters north and the set point is 88 meters north, which gives a difference of half a meter. So the estimated position is half meter away from the set points. Now the gain will apply a force demand uh, that is proportional to the deviation between the estimated and set point. If linear, there could be, for example, 4 tons per meter offset. That means the gain control would then apply a 2 tons force. The linear gain model is used if the DPO is selecting the high precision controller mode. The DP manufacturer let the operator increase or decrease the gain to the most suitable gain level depends on the vessel characteristics, the weather condition and the required position accuracy. Operational experience plays a large uh, part in the determine the optimum gain level. But the following general points should be noted. High gains provides the quickest vessel response, uh, the most accurate maneuvering and the smallest position window at the expense of power consumption and the exposure of uh, wear and tear of machinery and thrusters. Medium gear provides a slower vessel response than high gain and low gain provides the slowest vessel response and the largest positioning uh, footprint window. For all three control axes, the DPO can select customized gain level within the range given by the manufacturer. Now, I always talk about linear gain model, which is used most of the time. The linear model is so-called high precision control but there are also non-linear models like relaxed control and green control. The relaxed control uses the thruster more smoothly at the expense of station keeping accuracy. However, this type of control cannot guarantee that the vessel will stay within the operational area and is only apl apl applicable uh, for calm weather condition. As shown in the graph in the first meter of offset, the DP system is barely trying to push the vessel back into position and apply almost no force. The green control on the other hand uses a different control technology called non-linear model prediction control, which is optimized for precision area keeping with the minimum power consumption. Green control is applicable in all weather conditions. Whichever DP control strategy you used uh, to determine the gain factor, in the end there will be always a force in tons per meter offset in surge, sway and tons per meter offset in degree for yaw. This system works very well as long as the vessel is more or less stationary. But what's happen if the DPO put in a new set point? Let's say a move of 500 meter. Now, with the gain, for example, with 4 tons per meter offset, then 2,000 tons would be needed. And engine and thruster uh, most probably uh, would explode or fall apart. To avoid this, an instantaneous set point, or better known as carrot, is calculated. 
so as soon the DPO put in a new set point, two set points are created. First, the goal set point, which is the input from the DPO. It rep represents the vessel ultimate position and heading, or heading. Secondly, the so-called instant instantaneous set point or track point or carrot, depends on your manufacturer, is generated by the DP system on a cycle by cycle basis by the set point routine. It represents the position respectively the heading to which the DP system and therefore the gain is attempting to move the vessel to at any given time. When the DP system moves the vessel from the uh, current position to the goal set point, the system gradually moves the current across a range of set points step by step. So the gain control will calculate the force to apply using the distance from the vessel, estimate the position to the current and not to the goal set point. The current moves towards the new set point, it accelerates up to a desired rate of turn or motion speed. It is then held constantly as long as the uh, deceleration is not required. As the current approaches the goal set point, it starts decelerating to stop at the new set point. Moves over short distances may not reach the specific maximum desired rate of turn or speed before it, ne it is necessary to decelerate to stop uh, at the new set point. The amount of acceleration and deceleration can be set by the DPO. Since the vessel has moved between one calculated circle, the vessel model can easily calculate the estimated speed. This is then compared with the wanted speed. If the vessel is to maintain stationary, the wanted speed will be always zero. This comparison is then used in the dumping control to calculate the force demand, which is uh, proportional to, to the deviation between the wanted and actual speed. If the TPO put in a move, the step-by-step -step calculate, calculated wanted speed is being calculated by the carrot computation. If we have a vessel speed and direction, then we have the also called drag force. Because the vessel is floating in the water and if it moves, the resistance of the water will set up a force for, uh, to the opposite direction of the motion. The drag force is an important factor in the calculation of an accurate vessel speed. The drag force is calculated in the same manner as the wind force, whereas the vessel speed is squared and multiplied with the coefficient of the drag table divided to 9.81 to get to tons. This drag force, normally tons in certain sway and tons per meter for yaw, is sent to the vessel model. Now, why only to the vessel model and not like we are used to it, uh, to the actuator over the feet forward? There are a few points. First, the gain and dumping control has already contract for this motion. Secondly, the drag model uses huge coefficient compared to the wind model since density of water is uh, way bigger than air. Thirdly, due to the square input of the vessel speed, a small deviation of the estimated speed resulting in a big force, therefore it would need to be filtered, but the model cannot wait it needs this drag, uh, drag force already for the next calculation circle, which is normally every second. Fourth, the drag force is not feed forward because especially some older DP vessels are working with only one drag table, so in different drafts the model is way off. If only one drag table is used, the vessel starts to oscillate if it's higher in the water and opposite it reacts slower um, if it's lower in the water. Therefore, most vessels using different tables for different drafts. Fifth reason not to feed forward the drag force is because the drag tables are not taking hugging and sucking of the vessel into consideration, which actually is only a very small portion of uh, the offset. Uh, sixth reason, um, the draft reading can be wrong and could have a huge impact. Therefore, it's good practice to put the draft input manually into the DP system, even when measured data is available. That's because some manufacturers just taking the average of all draft reading. Let's make an example. So a vessel has four draft sensor. They measure 8.2, 8.3, 8.1 and 8.2 meters. Therefore, the average is 8.2 meters draft. Now, let's say 
one of the sensor fails, then the average is 6.2 meters. So the drag force will change so drastically that the vessel can move off position. All these reasons is why the drag force are not feed forward and only going into the vessel model means to the estimator. So now we have all automatic force demand needed on order uh, for the vessel to remain stationary. These resulting forces are first the feed forward consisting from the wind force and aero force, optional from the external force measured from the special DP operational modes, and second the automatic force demand which consists from the force from the uh, gain and dumping control. And third, the manual control with the joystick. When any of the axes are not on the automatic control, the joystick can be used to manually control the force applied by the thruster in those axes. There are two different joystick thrust settings. First and most used is the full thrust, which means maximum force available for all thrusters can be used. For example, pushing the choicing full ahead, all thrusts available in search will be used. Now, the second option is to use reduced thrust, which means the maximum applied thrust of force for the axes that are under choicing control are limited to half of the available force. Example, pushing the choicing again full, only half of the thrust available in search uh, will be used. The applied thruster force for axes that are on the joystick control can be scaled in various ways. This scaling or so-called precision gives a different response to the movement of the joystick depending on the configuration and the operational requirements of the vessel. So not only can we say we want to have full or reduced thrust, we can also select general, high speed or low speed. The general position is a linear relationship between the movement of the joystick and force exerted by the thruster. While in the other hand, the precision high speed maneuvering at the small movement of the joystick, the change of the thruster force are large, but decreases with the increase of the movement of the joystick. And opposite of that, uh, the precision low speed maneuvering, um, there the relationship between the movement of the joystick and the force exert progressively. Okay, let's make an example. If in full thrust mode the joystick is pushed 20% ahead. Now the exponents are used by the DP system to calculate the precision for it. For high speed it's 0 0.5, for general 1 and for low speed uh, 2 are used as in the exponent. Therefore pushing the lever 20% ahead would give with the high speed 45% of the available thrust force because 0 0.2 high 0 0.5 is 0 0.45 means 45%. If general position is selected, 20% is used because it's react linear. And with low speed 0 0.2 high 2 gives 0 0.04 means 4% of the available thrust is only used. In order to help the TPO while using joystick control, to compensate for the environment force, he can select the environment compensation for each axis, search, sway and yaw, separately. If selected, the system automatically compensates for the wind force acting on the vessel by allowing the feed forward to pass through the thrust allocation. So the thruster will use the necessary extra thrust in the appropriate direction. Now, if in joystick mode a position reference system measurement is available, the DP system will then also compensate for the aero force, including sea current and wave force, which are acting on the vessel. That, in the other hand, means if you're using a joystick for a long time uh, with the position reference system selected, an aero force, also called current, is building up. Now, if uh, you, you want then to go on DP, there can be a situation where the calculated current is no longer valid for the new operational condition. A typical example would be when entering automatic control after a period using the thruster to hold the vessel against the keyside. Then it's good practice to kill uh, or let's say delete the wrong current by going back uh, to standby and straight back to joystick 
Then the DP system will start all over again to calculate the current, means the error force, without the wrong data. Now we are leaving the area of the controller and concentrate on the vessel model, means estimator. Because now we have all ingredients to explain how the estimator calculates the new estimate for the next calculation circle. As we talked about the common filter, uh, the new estimate is being calculated, but since it's an extended common filter, the estimator will add more to the new estimate. Like all the residual from the thruster force, wind force, aero force, external measured force, and drag force are being added. One calculated circle is normally one second, means every second the new thruster force, wind force, aero force, external measured force and drag force are coming in. Then the old data, which is just one second old, is being deducted from the new data and left is the residual force, which changed in the last second. These residuals are then added to the estimated from the common filter and we get the new final estimate for that second which will be used uh, for the next uh, calculation circle. Okay, let's make an example. Only for the wind force in search, let's say we have uh, 15 meters per second wind and one second later we have 20 meters per second. So the wind model calculates with the coefficient multiplied by wind speed squared uh, the force. Let's say the coefficient from the table is uh, 7 kN per, uh, per meter per second then in the first second would be uh, 15 meters per second squared multiplied with 7 kilonewton per meter per second is uh, 1575 kilonewton. One second later the new measurements with 20 meters per second squared multiplied by 7 kilonewton per meter second is um, 2800 kilonewton. So the estimate received from the wind model first the 1,575 uh, kN and then a sec later 2,800 kN. At this time the 1,575 becomes the old measurement and the latest 2,800 kN the new measurements. Now we deduct the uh, new minus the old, so 2,800 uh, kN minus 1,575 kN gives a residual of 1,225 kN, which act on as an additional force in the last second on the vessel and is added to the estimation from the common filter. But now we have a problem because we received the new estimated position from the common filter as a position, let's say for example 88 meters north. How can we then add 1225 kN for the new final estimate? Now that guy, Sir Isaac Newton came up with the formula called F is equal to M multiplied with A, translated means force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. The force we know in our example is uh, 1225 kN. The mass is also known by the TP system, that's the mass of the vessel, means the displacement in fresh water. The formula for the volume uh, of the displacement is equal into the length multiplied by B, multiplied by draft, multiplied by block coefficients. Because the ship is not a block like a shoe carton box, the streamlined form of a vessel needs to be considered. If you uh, draw a box around the submerged part of the ship, it is then the ratio of the box volume occupied by the ship. So a barge has a block coefficient of 1, while uh, a bulk carrier has around 0.8, and the offshore supply vessel around 0.7. So let's calculate an example for the mass. A vessel has a length of 120 meters, a beam of 25 meters and a draft of 7 meters and a block coefficient of 0.75. So the displacement is um, 120 meters multiplied by 25 meters multiplied by 7 meters multiplied by 0.75 gives a displacement of uh, 15,750 cubic meter, means in fresh water 15,750 tons. This calculation can also be avoided if the hydrostatic table of the vessels are simplified integrated in the DP system. 
important to see for you as DP operator, your draft input has a key factor to calculate an accurate mass of the vessel. So back to our example with Isaac Newton formula, we know the force 1225 kN and the mass of uh, 15750 tons. Now we need to calculate the acceleration. So 1225 kN divided to 15750 tons gives 0.08 meters per second square. So we can say now uh, within the last second the vessel moved 0.08 meter faster than in the previous second. Therefore the vessel moved 8 centimeters in the last second in search only for the wind force. I know, you will say that cannot be correct and I can assure you it's not because the movement is not linear. But because the DP system is doing this calculation every second the results are very close to the true value. It's like on this curve. If you zoom in very close, uh, this uh, linear tangent is at this point and second very close at the true value. And because in the next calculation second, the DP calculates it again. So it will always stay very close to the uh, true value. This solution is of approach is called linearization of a non-linear system. And this works very good in the DP. Now, the new estimates from the current filter or residual from the thruster, wind error, external forces, drag forces are added. If the thruster would not have any delay and the feed forward works perfectly, then this 8 cm from the, from the example is being already contracted with the residual from the thruster force, which would be minus 8 cm. That of course is not possible because the reaction time of the thruster is not that fast. In, on the other hand, the vessel has a huge inertia, gives the thrust of time until the vessel um, really is going to move. Further, in our example, these 8 centimeters need to be converted by the system to a common coordinate system. Because these 8 centimeters are relative to the vessel, uh, while the estimate is a true position, in our example 88 meters north. When the heading and the vessel is known, uh, the conversion is very easy to calculate. We don't go in into formulas here since every school kid can uh, do this calculation. In order to get the final new estimate which will be forward and compared with the new measurements, position and heading and the residual goes uh, into the common filter and the circle starts all over again. Every second. Also, the final new estimate is used in the controller to compare it with the position and heading set points where the gain factor will add a force to push the vessel back into the position. So, that's for now. I hope you understand now more about the controller and the estimator called vessel model. To remember, this DP block diagram is still simplified and shows uh, only one possible implementation of it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.